We are a homesteading, homeschooling, missionary family of six living off-grid in Kenya. Oh, and did I mention we only live in 224 square feet? Hi everyone! Today we wanted to do a Meet Us. We want to tell you a little bit about who we are and our story and how we wound up here in Kenya homesteading off-grid with our four children. I am Kimberly. And I'm Henry. Yeah, I'm Kenyan. Uh, we, my wife Kim and I met here. Uh, uh, yeah. We met here doing uh, missionary work back in 2011. I moved here just after my 23rd birthday. So we are missionaries. Uh, we met in a church. We love to just tell people about the love of God for them and, and what people mean to God and the beauty of God. Uh, I, I use rap music to express that and, and you know, uh, to, to preach that. So we met in a conference where I was doing some songs and then uh, I met her. I noticed up from the stage and young people out there you better pray hard man sometimes when you notice someone God's gonna make them notice you too so she noticed me too that and here we are four kids a bunch of chickens <laughs> 53 animals and counting currently we oh probably about a week or two into meeting each other we started dating at 11 months after that we got, we got married engaged. we got engaged no oh, yeah, we, we got, got engaged right. a few months after got yeah. married 11 months after and uh, yeah, we when did. You know, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, he was a local missionary, so that worked out perfect because I was here as a missionary, and so we yeah, she married me for the together. visa. It's for the visa. She wants she want to be a Kenyan, so she. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, when you know, you know. And so we're homesteading now. I can hear the chicken, and we got our kids, we got our animals. Yeah, he forgot a whole seven, six and a half year gap, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> forgot after we got married. Well, there was, we were in Kenya together for another two years after that, doing You're our right. missionary work. But then we actually headed to Canada, which is where I'm from. I'm from mm -hmm. uh, British Columbia. And that's where we had three of our four children. And mm -hmm. Henry had gone there for school. Uh, school. Mm -hmm. And so, to meet your family too. And of course, to finally meet my family. Um, so it was great because we got to be with my side of the family for about that's six awesome. years. Oh, I finished schooling. And um, actually, we came back. I was still finishing up. I finished. Um, He's still in school. I'm still. He's in school. doing and more. I'm school. a student. I'm gonna be a he student for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> the hope is to stop by forty. Let's go with that. We were in Canada for six years, and then we felt like God was calling us back to Kenya. It's something Definitely. we always we always wanted to come back. We just weren't sure on the timing. So we came back in twenty September twenty twenty. So we've been back for just almost over a two year years. and a half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Almost two years and, this September, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we actually um, when we came back we had our fourth daughter, Nema. She was born man. March twenty twenty one. Growing super fast, yeah. man. So she's just yeah. over a year now. So that was a whole different experience having a baby in Kenya. Um yeah, great experience. He actually um, delivered her because she came very, very quickly. So maybe we'll share that whole birth story in another video. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun and very special for Henry to deliver oh, her. That was amazing. Yeah. God just gave us a beautiful gift too, you know, like really bought that baby. Like mm -hmm. for real. Like, yeah, that was awesome. At that time, now we weren't homesteading yet. Um, we were just living in a complex with a few other families. Um, so how did we now start, how did our hearts start changing to want to now homestead? To homestead? And oh, it wasn't yeah. something we had ever sought out to do when we first met, when we were, you know, 23 and 24. Um, yeah, but it's something that's obviously very important to us now. So when we came out here, just back here, the, the background you can see, there's a, there's a land for ministry. We, we came out here to our, our primary focus ministry, which has taken almost two years to start, is to set up a youth camp. That's what we came here to do. Our youth camp is a big, big part. You're reaching young people is what we do. We reach young people. We engage young people yesterday. We were out doing that. We do that weekly. We want a youth center in our town and stuff like that. But our primary focus of how to reach young people is doing a youth camp. So um, uh, we're inspired by a good organization in North America called the Young Life. They use camp. They use clubs. And they use, uh, what's the other one, the CC campaigners in schools to reach young people. And it's working great. Uh, um, I learned so much from them and uh, we hope to see the youth come reach young people. So when we came out here, that's what we came to do. 
So, but the plan was to leave there too, as the camp directors or camp owners or whatever running there, that the joint, you know. So that's what we came to do. And the plan was to leave on this piece of land, because God gave this piece to us some time back. But we wanted to segment a small part of this land for our home, and to be our home forever. You know, like this is it. This is our, we own land now. This is our home. And one day, on a Saturday, we were just praying, and we 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 felt in our heart to really let go everything of this five acre, including the piece we wanted to put a house on. We said, let it all go to God. It's a hundred percent ministry land, a hundred, all of it, on a Saturday. And then the Sunday we came driving and we saw this piece of land where we were on, and we said, I think I said the exact words were, I can live here. <laughs> and we had no money, we had no idea of how we can even buy the land. And um, months down the line, we bought it out. We are on this, um, almost three acre now that God gave us very close to the city but still of greed uh, next to a cliff that is this is the view behind us my son calls it the aeroplane place because mm -hmm. it feels like we're an aeroplane when we sit down down there so uh, that's kind of what we uh, that what pushed us to get in this piece and then once we started staying here I think we realized it's to work as we can actually homestead we, we are looking into permaculture we are learning all that we went into natural building. So we're going, we're homesteaders, man. It, it's amazing. We didn't plan that, man. Yeah, we got our animals. We're working on our shamba. We keep learning all this permaculture. We've done our food forest, which is coming. And we hope to to really, you know, bring our bees, bring, yeah, man, I don't want to say a lot, but yeah, that's kind of how we ended up homesteading. It was not part of the plan, but now it is. We, we hope to get a lot of stuff from this land that can go back to the community because we use food to outreach our young people a lot and I hope we stop buying and start growing our own food for, for mission work. I think the more that we started understanding permaculture and homesteading, mm -hmm. you know, our desire to be able to live off the land and be self-sufficient and healthy became very important to us and mm -hmm. you know we're making very small changes right now like we've cut out sugar um, from our our coffee and our chai um, use honey which you can use. get from our bees here living off the land and you know most of the constructions we're doing in the properties off the land too like our chicken coops we we made straw bell chicken coops uh cob chicken coops um and the soil uh you know the clay and the soil is off the land or everything we think of first of all we think of the land so and, you know if by the end of the first or two years if we are 60 to 70 percent self-sustaining that'd be amazing our food forest is packed with a lot of fruits and we hope to not till the land we hope to continue learning permaculture and the cycle that god designed for us to to you know mm -hmm. to go through uh, now that jesus died and rose again we don't have to till the land <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm a farmer who's hoping to be a lazy farmer maybe is it lazy or restful farmer a restful you know farmer. instead of watering we want to make sure that uh we pipe around and make sure we have drip irrigation or something like that down the line as we keep working bit and bit yeah mm -hmm. so where well, we are not working hard but as people say we work smart mm. as we set up we hope that it will be easy to just run you know on its own as god intended so yeah man i love it i love every bead our uh, chicken coop is now full of uh we started out with 27 chicks we are up 13 new chicks little babies so yeah. man <laughs> we're yeah. loving it and uh, oh yeah we get 10 to 12 eggs uh an average of 10 eggs a day which is pretty cool even in and the they all disappear weather. between us and the dogs and <laughs> baking and this and that yeah. so uh i think our 13 new baby chicks are going to be a blessing because it's just yeah. nice to be able to go into the chicken coop and grab, and grab eggs we eat mm -hmm. eggs for breakfast because it's something that's the number one source of protein i believe yeah right now we are looking forward to that where if i want to you know some spices i want some spices i'm just gonna pop back we have a spice corner with flowers and stuff we can get our medicine there mm -hmm. our you know our tea from our you know we have tea plants in the in the hub garden so we we hope to really benefit from from the land our days are very f <laughs> <laughs> it's our day off <laughs> it's our day <laughs> we, <yeah. laughs> okay. so anyway yeah okay.
our days are very full and fun. Um, they're full of, I think, like Henry said, lots of learning as we're new to homesteading. We're learning so much. And um, yeah, apart from that, you know, gardening and, and just also trying to figure out how do we live in 224 square feet with four children, especially mm -hmm. during a rainy season when the kids can't be outdoors and we're in nope. a tiny space. And so that's a little bit about our story, how we met and, and how we wound up here in our small town off grid doing what we do and we love it. It's so oh, yeah. fulfilling to be able to to eat food from your land and slowly, slowly, slowly become self-sufficient. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So we would love you guys to comment below if you want to know more details about any aspects of our life and our story, like more about how we met or our love story, uh, more about our time in Canada, or even more about our missionary work here. So the culture shocks both in Canada yeah, and Yeah, culture mm -hmm. and reverse culture shock. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. We really appreciate all of you tuning in with us, following along. Thank you so much. Have an awesome day. Peace. Bye-bye.